uh, one, two, okay, it's working. So um, I'm going to talk about, uh, like uh, the, this uh, presenter said, the BBC Microbit. We are, are going to see that this is, it is a very interesting device for people interested in uh, um, analyzing some 2.4 gigahertz protocols. So I'm just uh, first, uh, I'm going to present myself. I'm uh, the head of research and development at Tecodecom Digital Security, which is a French company. Uh, I'm also a senior security researcher, and uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, a great fan of reverse engineering, uh, both software and hardware. So uh, let's jump into it. We are going to um, see, uh, um, to see uh, in the start uh, of this presentation the, what the BBC Microbit is, what uh, the, um, its features are, and what we can basically do with uh, this kind of device. And then uh, we uh, are going to hack into this uh, tiny piece of device. We are going to try to, try to turn the Microbit into a sniffer and see what we can do with this. I got some, uh, some nice demos to show you then. And, and uh, I will uh, talk also talk about uh, the radio bit firm where I have cre created to make all of this possible. So the BBC Microbit is uh, basically a, a tiny PCB with uh, some uh, interesting stuff on it. Uh, it has a five by five LED matrix, so if you want to display some text and make it scroll and so on, this is uh, uh, possible with this, uh, with this device. It also has two buttons if you want to, to have uh, some kind of a basic user interaction. It uh, also has, has a, a custom expansion connector you can use to plug it into uh, robots and so on. The people who designed the, the microbit also designed a lot of kits you can buy on the internet to plug the, this microbit into. So if you want to, to make a, a, a robot that follows a, a path, this is possible and so there are a lot of them. Uh, it uh, also has some kind of wireless capabilities. So you can make two microbits communicate over the air. So this part is um, quite interesting, but the, the most interesting part in it is that it supports MicroPython. I don't know uh, if, you, if you know about MicroPython. So this is uh, basically a, a Python interpreter embedded into a microcontroller. So this is uh, very cool because instead of developing in uh, C or C++, you can just write some code in Python and make it run on the microcontroller, which is here the micro bit. So this is uh, very interesting. <laughs> One of the uh, other um, interesting fact is that it only costs 15 euros. You can order it on, uh, on Kitronic in the UK, for instance. So this is very affordable. If uh, we have a deeper look at, a deeper look at the specifications, so it, uh, it is based on a Nordic semiconductor chip, which is the NRF 51A22. Well, this, is a, this, this may sound a, quite weird, but in fact, it, it's just a 2.4 gigahertz uh, GFSK transceiver. So this is a, a little tiny chip, which has a CPU, some flash. We have a 256 kilobyte of flash, some RAM, and uh, uh, some internal peripherals to be able to modulate and demodulate the radio signals. Um, it's also three volt powered, so it can power it with uh, two AAA batteries. So this is a, uh, also a good, uh, a good point for this uh, tiny device. Uh, it's also easy to program if you want your kids to, to be able to program it. There is uh, some uh, scratch-like uh, uh, scratch -like service on the internet. You can just put blocks and uh, program it with, uh, with, this, uh, with, this, uh, with this service. Uh, the Microbit guys also provide an online Python editor if you want to jump into the Python code and do whatever you want with this, uh, with this Microbit. If you connect to, uh, the microbit to your computer with the micro USB uh, port, you can get a, a console, a serial port. When using Minicom, for instance, you can get a, a Ripple, which is a read, evaluate, uh, print loop, so you can just type Python code and see what happens on the microbit. Very, very useful for debugging purpose. And of course, it's uh, able to communicate over, over the air with this, uh, this term transceiver. So basically, the, the guy who made the microbit uh, implemented their own protocol. So this is a, a very specific protocol they designed. It's um, not uh, some kind of Bluetooth or, or, or other, but in fact, the transceiver itself can handle many protocols, such as the what Nordic semiconductor called the uh, shock burst protocol. Uh, I don't know if you have ever heard about this protocol. Maybe you're using it uh, 
during all the week, but you are not, uh, you, you do, not, do not know that this is this protocol you are using. So this is basically used in most of uh, wireless keyboards and mice. You can have a term. So uh, this is a very widespread protocol, and the next version of this, this protocol is also on, handled by the microbit, and say the uh, 51.8.22, which is the announced version of this, announced shock burst protocol, called, also called ESB. And of course, this is a, a BLE enabled chip, which uh, simply means that we can do some uh, Bluetooth low energy stuff with it. Uh, in fact, the uh, microbit software comes with a, a very tiny stack we can use, BLE stack, to create services and create peripheral devices that uh, uh, that will be able to to communicate over BLE. So this is uh, quite interesting too. So when I saw this, when I saw all this protocol and all these uh, wireless capabilities, I, I, I was like, uh, wow, this is Christmas. <laughs> Why this is Christmas? Because the announced shock burst protocol uh, have been broken by Mark Newlin during DEF CON 24. Uh, he managed to, to hack into various devices such as uh, wireless keyboards and mice. So this uh, is uh, quite interesting. Uh, so just uh, to um, give you some uh, some uh, details about this hack. So uh, Mark Newlin used uh, a specific device called the Quizy Radio. Um, which is based on the, the same, uh, not this exactly the same uh, transceiver, but uh, an another one. The, and the, it developed the MassJack protocol, MassJack framework, sorry. So this is a framework written in Python you can use to hack into a wireless keyboard and mice, which is open source, available on GitHub. They also created a, a nice uh, website called the MassJack.com. Uh, you can find every vulnerable device on it, so if you are interested in hacking wireless keyboards and mice and go uh, maybe further with this device, you can uh, have a look at it. And also it's written in Python. But uh, Mark Newlin didn't do the hack itself. He relies on, uh, the hack itself relies on the uh, hack found by Travis Goodspeed and published uh, on his blog. <laughs> so this is a hack targeting the NRF 24L01 Plus which is another transceiver made by Nordic Semiconductor. Um, and this is uh, very interesting because uh, we can turn the micro bit into a non offensive device. <laughs> Instead of use, just using to make it uh, uh, bring some layers or, or communicate with the robots, uh, say, we can do more interesting, more interesting stuff with it. So let's uh, have a look at what uh, we can do with it and uh, how we can hack into this micro bit. So first of all, I will just quickly detail the hack discovered by Travis Goodspeed, and which is a, a very nice hack. <laughs> How it works? Uh, this is a transceiver. We have uh, the NRF 24L01 Plus, which uh, basically takes uh, some uh, signal from the 2.4 gigahertz uh, bandwidth and then demodulates and turn the wireless signal into a, uh, a bit stream. So this is uh, the interpreted bit stream. Normally, the, um, the ESB protocol, so the enhanced shock burst protocol, starts with a preamble of 55 in X. So this is a uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and so on. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it's uh, a very known, well known uh, preamble because it's uh, often used to synchronize the uh, decoder with uh, the, the bit stream. This preamble is followed by an address. An address uh, could be from three to five bytes long. So this is uh, the protocol that states this. Followed by a, a specific byte, which is uh, used here for the dynamic payload length. So you can send variable length payload over the air with this protocol. Followed by the payload. And at the end, uh, two bytes CRC. So basically, when you are using this transceiver, you, can only, you, are, you must set an address, and the transceiver matches the address with the payload uh, got uh, from, the, uh, from the wireless signal. So you can only listen uh, to a specific address. You cannot sniff, literally. So what Travis did, uh, Goodspeed discover is that if we set up a specific register in this uh, transceiver, to a specific value, which is undefined normally. This is uh, precise in the, in the data sheet. Normally, it's an invalid value. Uh, if we set the address to be only two bytes long, 
we can have a very different behavior from the instance shiver. That means we can match the address on the original preamble and get the address field in the payload. That means if you set up your transceiver this way, you can sniff everything because the uh, address will match every payload, every preamble, sorry. So uh, this is uh, quite interesting. The fun fact is that uh, the original preamble is not checked by the transceiver. So this is what we can call a hardware vulnerability of this transceiver, we can, uh, and we can uh, exploit it to turn the transceiver into a sniffer. So this is what Mark Newlin, uh, based the Maljack framework, uses to turn his crazy radio into a sniffer and capture every packet sent in the, uh, set in the air with the uh, um, unshock burst protocol. So why, it is, uh, why is it interesting? Because uh, I discovered that the uh, 51A22 has exactly the same issue. That means you can turn your microbit into a sniffer using the exact same trick. Well, not exactly the same. The 51A22 has also a, a good, uh, uh, some nice features. Um, the um, hack made by, uh, by uh, Travis Goodspeed is uh, quite limited because you have uh, only 32 bytes of payload maximum. You cannot get more information from uh, your sniffer. So if you uh, have 32 bytes of payload, you are, you are limited because you must get the CRC and the address in your payload to be able to match, to check if the packet is a good one, is a, a valid packet for this protocol. So basically, you only got 27 bytes of data, useful data. With the uh, 51A22, the maximum payload size is 254 bytes. So we can get much more data and get much more packets. In order to, for this hack to work, we need to uh, hack a bit around with uh, uh, some kind of C++ code. So what I did is just uh, modifying the uh, radio module implement implemented by uh, the microbit uh, developers into the MicroPython firmware, so I had to, to put the, all of this. Basically, I set a, an address size of two, uh, also the uh, antennas to a big antenna, and I, I used the specific address, which is uh, 0055, to be able to sniff with this transceiver. <laughs> then we can get a lot of data, raw data from the, uh, the signal we got from the air, and check if a packet is valid by checking the CRC. So we can get all the bytes, all the bits, and we try to, de to determine if the packet we got is a valid one. If it's a valid one, then we can process it and get uh, what we want. So since I've implemented this, all of this in my, uh, my firmware, so I created a modded firmware from the microbit original firmware to be able to do that, um, we can do it from, uh, from uh, some kind of, uh, from the radio module in Python. So basically, if you want to implement a quick uh, an shock burst protocol sniffer, it's done in a dozen of lines, in less than a dozen of lines. So I, I tried this one. So basically, we have a, a while through loop, and we get uh, the packets are, are, are they come. Uh, of course, these packets are, are checked uh, with, the, with the CRC, so we get all the valid packets. And if you program your microbit with the the firmware I made, and you are, if you are using the correct Python code, you would get data from, say, a wireless mouse. A wireless mouse. So this, is, this is my mouse. I'm uh, moving the mouse around, and you, you can see all the packets sent by the mouse to the USB dongle I plug into my computer. So this is a Logitech mouse. Well, it's very easy to determine because it start, all the packets start with uh, C2. But in fact, I can sniff all of this information. But uh, the interesting thing is that we can also send packets, send information. So this technique is not limited to the uh, Nordic semiconductors uh, and unshock burst protocol and shock burst protocol. We can do the same with any 2.4 gigahertz based protocol um, that uses the same data rate and the same modulation. So we have a world of possibilities. When we think about 2.4 gigahertz protocols, we uh, think also about Bluetooth Smart, which is a Bluetooth low energy. This chip can be, can be used to make some uh, kind of uh, Bluetooth uh, low energy communication, so why not use it to hack into this protocol? 
So it's very, very easy uh, to do it because we have uh, all the stuff we need on this transceiver. Um, just before going uh, uh, more, uh, more low level with the Bluetooth protocol, I'm going to recall some facts on this protocol. So when you have a, a Bluetooth device, this Bluetooth device advertises itself on three channels, channel 37, 38, and 39. As you can see, the channels are spread over the boundaries just to avoid interferences. So these uh, packets are sent by the, the device uh, as a specific structure and also what we call an access address. The access, access address is a four byte identifier used at the link layer to identify your connection. And for the advertising channels, this address is known. Remember, we can set an address between three and five bytes with this transceiver, so it's basically easy to, made, uh, to edit a listen on this uh, advertising packet. So the only thing we have to do is just to set the address with this value and listen, to get the packet back from the transceiver. So by doing this, uh, I was able to create a, a little sniffer for this uh, advertising packet in BLE using the microbit. So here's an example of what you can get from this, uh, this micro Python. So this is the raw version of the, the advertising packets. But basically, it's very easy to read. Uh, we'll take a, a, an easy one. So 020106, this is a one field uh, specifying the characteristic of this, uh, of this device. And sometimes we get uh, much more information, such as uh, the uh, available services and so on, and even the name of this, uh, of this device. Talking about advertising packets, we can also inject our own packets just to create fake devices. So this one, we create a fake broken online device. I can just run it. But um, I could have done a demo here just to see if uh, detected by my computer. But uh, I find it more useful to test uh, PDU parsers. Why PDUs? But because PDU are the format used to send data over the uh, advertising packets. So the data I got previously with the O2, O1, A1A and something, this is in fact PDU data. So I'm building a new packet, a new advertising packet with a, uh, some um, random MAC address. And I'm going to uh, tweak a bit with uh, the field, the name field, which is a complete local name field here with uh, the tag O9. And I'm going to tell the, this packet that the broken 09 string is 10 bytes long, which is in fact wrong because the field itself takes only nine bytes. And we're gonna see what happens with some kind of uh, Linux tool. So I'm on my box. I'm using a HCI tool, which is a part of the Bluesy framework. And if you look carefully, well, I said if you look carefully, the uh, broken O9 device is, uh, spot, is uh, detected by this, uh, this tool. But we also got an extra, an extra uh, byte, uh, which is not normal, because uh, normally the HCI tool would have detected this, um, this packet as a malformed packet and not taken uh, it into account. But in fact, it, it is. So uh, by having a quick look at the ACI tool code, it's very easy to see that there is a, a line with a, uh, some kind of, uh, of with an issue in it, uh, which is this one. Uh, the field length is the size precise in the uh, field structure. So this is a first byte. And if uh, the offset is well, the position we are in the, uh, in the packet, uh, uh, for this uh, given field. So if the field length is uh, greater than the total length of the PDU data, so there's something wrong. But in fact, the size of this, uh, this data is a size plus one because the byte of uh, containing the size is not taken into account in this, uh, this size. So basically, the, there may be a, a way to create some kind of buffer overflow in it, but they took uh, some uh, specific steps, and this is not... Uh, 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 this is more a bug than uh, uh, a vulnerability. You cannot uh, uh, overflow a buffer with this one. We can also sniff BLE connections. So this is uh, performed the same way. The BLD connections is, uh, are initiated by a, a, B, a Bluetooth low energy connection packet. 
which is sent over the air. So this is this packet also has the same uh, access address. And if we get all this information, we may be able to follow a connection and sniff a Bluetooth low energy connection between two devices. So this may be interesting. The CRC unit is used for CRC computation, of course. And there are other two other parameters that are very useful. The interval, basically the time spent by the device on each channel. And the up increment, which is the number of channels to jump when we up from one channel to another. I didn't record that uh, the Bluetooth low energy protocol is based or is using channel hopping, but this is a fact. We need this information to be able to synchronize with the signal and jump from one channel to another. So this is a, a sniffer. Uh, this is a, a, a small code able to sniff a BLE connection request. And we can get some, uh, some information from it. So we flash the micro bit with the correct firmware and Python code. And then we can get the information. We are listening on the channel uh, 30, uh, 37. And we get multiple connections from a device to another device with different values. With uh, these values, uh, if, when, once we know these values, we can just follow the connection and, and get all the packets. But Python cannot really sniff on the micro bit because of uh, um, incompatible delays. You know, there is some latency uh, by uh, going from Python to the native code and native phone back to Python. So this is not a, a good way using micro Python to sniff BID with the micro bit and even with the uh, 51 8 in, uh, in general. So maybe if you want to do this, it would be better to uh, look at the DAL, which is the micro bit device abstraction layer to do this kind of stuff. Based on this, based on this uh, discovery, I made some uh, some tools. First tool I, I created is a mouse jack like ESB sniffer. Um, this is a very, very simple tool allowing uh, anyone to, to sniff uh, some kind of traf ESB traffic and also supports the legacy shock burst protocol and was sniffing. So this is uh, all the options you can use to, to sniff. If you want to, to sniff some information from, uh, say, uh, wireless keyboard, you program your micro bit with, uh, with my code and you get all the information from the keyboard. That means if you type with your keyboard, you get all the stuff from this. You may want to recover the keystrokes sent by the keyboard. If the also, uh, of course, if the keystrokes are not encrypted. We can also do some BAD uh, link layer sniffing. Be careful, it's going be, to be fast because uh, I'm going uh, raw data from the link layer of the Bluetooth low energy on the specific channel. The uh, channel two is uh, the correspond to the channel 37 in BLE, so I can get all the data I want. So this may be interesting if you are looking to sniff raw packets uh, without handling all the protocol, just to get some information from over the year uh, from existing existing connection and so on. Based on this, based on this sniffer and so on, uh, I developed the wireless keylogger, which is in fact a very tiny embeddable wireless keylogger for keyboards, Microsoft keyboards. So uh, there are um, a lot of literature on the internet about uh, uh, how to hack into the uh, Microsoft wireless keyboards or to tap the keystrokes uh, sent over the air. So I, I took a, a micro bit and uh, I, I put some uh, uh, two three triple A batteries, and I made this uh, this uh, tiny device. I'm going to show you. Uh, this sniffer is going to use uh, all the micro Python uh, features available to store the keystrokes in a, lit a very small file system. The micro bit uh, uh, firmware provides a way to create files in the flash and to store uh, data in it like uh, like if it was a, a file. So this is me planting my uh, my wireless keylogger. So. So here it is. I put the uh, last AAA battery, power it, conceal it uh, in the uh, meeting room, and then, uh, whoop. yep. So then uh, someone came to the computer, type in some uh, some email and password. So this is uh, the email used uh, was uh, moneyhenry at outlook.com. Uh, this is a totalness. 
Okay, so let's keep it this way. So types in his password and so on. So while he was typing this pass his password, the tiny de uh, device, which is a micro bit, listens all the keystrokes, stores all the keystrokes in, uh, in his memory. And then I, I was able to extract these keystrokes by connecting to the uh, micro bit so, but, and pushing a button. So I developed the uh, firmware to be able to send back all the keystrokes when the uh, specific button is pushed. You can see there is a check on the screen, and I get all the keystrokes and uh, the password used. So this one, uh, so the password used here is uh, Henri Meunier, with, uh, I see here some uh, uh, lead speak. So this is uh, quite effective, and all of this, of course, is open source and on the GitHub, as I will tell you, uh, tell you uh, as I will uh, describe it uh, later. So this is uh, quite interesting. I can get some uh, some uh, some sniffing, some wireless sniffing about uh, uh, this uh, this Microsoft keyboard. Well, in fact, it has already been done by a semi cam car with a, a piece of device you can plug on the in the in the in the, in the plug, the power plug. And uh, so this is not quite so new. Um, I then make uh, some uh, some interesting stuff with the the Chiasson 610 quadcopters. I don't know if you own one. I, I got one here just to, for the demonstration. So this is a very tiny uh, quadcopter, and uh, it also relies on uh, some kind of 2.4 gigahertz protocol. So this uh, Chiasson 610 quadcopter uh, has been uh, uh, targeted by uh, two. No, uh, well-known person. Uh, the first one was Mark Newlin, so the, the author of Mass Jack, and the second one was uh, Michael Osman, the guy who created the AKRF uh, SDR. So at uh, Torcam two th uh, 2016, they battled uh, to, uh, with uh, some, some quadcopters just to see if they could take over the uh, each other's each other's quadcopter uh, by abusing this uh, this protocol. So the result, uh, the result was not so great. They ended uh, in the draw, so uh, no winner. They make some uh, some kind of uh, exploits, and uh, it didn't work so well. So challenge accepted. The idea was to then try to do better than uh, than the, these guys to take over this uh, this quadcopter. So let's have a look at the protocol between the quadcopter remote and the quadcopter itself. So it's very simple. Once you power on the quadcopter, you have to power on, power on the remote, and there is a binding, so you push the throttle stick back and forth, and then this, um, this uh, remote control sends uh, uh, some kind of binding request to the uh, quadcopter, which um, answers back with a binding reply. The binding request contains what they call the transmitter ID, which is a, a four bytes ID, ID used by the, the remote. And the uh, quadcopter sends back his vehicle ID, uh, which is uh, another four bytes value. Then there is a confirmation. And once the binding is done, then you can use your remote controller to control the drone. And the remote controller um, performs some kind of channel hopping over four channels with uh, all the information sent on each channel. So there is a, a, a times uh, uh, time a wait time between the two, ch uh, two channels, uh, which is of uh, six milliseconds. And uh, each time the remote controller jumps on a new channel, it sends the, some information with the, all the stick positions and also the transmitter ID and the vehicle ID. So you, you need to know these values if you want to take over the, uh, the quadcopter. And the idea is to hijack this, con this connection. Uh, I mean, by, uh, we are going to try to send uh, quicker uh, the uh, information, the packet, just to take control of the, of the drone. So um, there is uh, some kind of channel hopping, as I said. But in fact, the channel hopping is not so good because it's derived from the transmitter ID. So the two first bytes of the transmitter ID are used to determine the four channels used by uh, this connection. So let's hijack. The process is pretty simple. We need to sniff a valid packet from channels 3 to 18. So the first uh, group, the first uh, possible channels for the first, uh, for the first uh, channel uh, used in the channel hopping mechanism. Uh, once the valid packet is found, we got the transmitter ID and vehicle ID. Then we checked the current channel based on the 
transmitter ID, we derive exactly the same way the channels and see if uh, the channel we are listening on are in this list. And then when we, are, when we get the confirmation that we, are, we get the correct transmitter ID and vehicle ID, then we synchronize and we send packets quicker than the original remote just to take control of it. So the, uh, the problem is that this, uh, uh, this quadcopter doesn't use a Nordic semiconductor transceiver. It uses uh, some Chinese one, which is not so standard. Uh, so uh, I got to, to tweak uh, my, um, to tweak my, my, my micro bit a, uh, a bit just to be able to, to be compatible with this uh, transceiver. This transceiver uses a custom preamble, which is not 55, but 71 OF 55. But it uh, doesn't matter. If I put this uh, preamble in the address field, it would, be, it would match with the Nordic semiconductor uh, 51822, and I would be able to send and receive to this address with uh, this custom preamble. And of course, I can use this preamble, the, this preamble to, to hijack uh, the, the old protocol. So, uh, uh, we can, uh, we, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, end of the day. So, um, we are setting up the radio with uh, some Python. So, we enable the CX mode just to be able to communicate with the transceiver used by the, uh, the quadcopter and the, the remote control. We find a valid packet by sniffing for the for some valid packet sent by this transceiver, and uh, we check if the transmitter ID is uh, the one expected by deriving all the, all the channel and, and checking if the channel we are listening on is in this list. And once we get the vehicle ID and transmitter ID, we just synchronize by listening on the first channel and waiting for a packet to to be sniffed. And when once we got a valid packet we just jump from one channel to another at uh, uh, six milli with a six millisecond delay between each channel. And once we have done all of that, all of this, we can just uh, send valid packets and try to control the quadcopter uh, and take it over, take control of this quadcopter. Uh, so this is possible to send packets with a micro bit. But uh, in fact, we also need a, uh, a controller to be able to, to pilot the, the quadcopter. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, very easy to make with, a, uh, to make with a, a micro bit, but the micro bit doesn't have all the stuff uh, we need to, to, to fly this, uh, this quadcopter. So I thought about using a classic remote controller used in uh, IOO modeling. So this is uh, the DX6 of Spectrum. Um, maybe some of you uh, uh, knows about this uh, this kind of controller, but in fact, it's not so easy to, interf to interface with the micro bits. So this was not a, a good choice. I thought about using a USB compatible gamepad, which is in fact the same kind of remote, but uh, with a USB interface. The fact is, I, uh, if I uh, if I use this uh, kind of controller, I need to plug it on uh, this uh, plug this, this controller to, uh, into a computer, and then the computer to the micro bit, and the computer has to do the relay, the, the interface between the micro bit and the remote, and it uh, also introduces some delays due to the serial port. So this was not a good choice. Uh, so I, I needed to, to find uh, another, another controller. So but, well. <laughs> I was a, a bit desperate. Thought about using a foot gamepad, but uh, no, no foot at home and no, not enough buttons. So I had to find another another type of controller. Well, why not? We're using a CX10 remote controller. We have all the sticks in it, and we got all the stuff we need to to fly uh, that one. So let's go. We took. Uh, so we, put, we had to put some wires between the, the sticks and the micro bit uh, using some uh, uh, using the expansion uh, expansion connector, and then we are able to to make some kind of uh, pseudo expansion connector for us in order to plug our micro bit in it. Of course, uh, I removed the original transceiver uh, from this remote just to, to be able to to drive it with the, the micro bit. So. With this remote controller, we can easily read the sticks value, which is uh, basically some potentiometers. Uh, you're using the microbit firmware, the original firmware, so with the read analog method. And then um, I uh, implemented all of this. I managed to get the, uh, to take control of this uh, quadcopter. So I'm going to, 
to show you a small video with the, the test bed. So this is uh, the, uh, the this exploit. So uh, I pour down the um, the quadcopter. I bind it with the remote controller, so I can fly it. Well, fly. I keep it. Uh, I keep it on the on the table just to be uh, to be sure that uh, there is no problem. I plug it my uh, ROG remote controller. So if I take the original controller back, nothing happens. But if I take my uh, ROG controller, then I got full control on the quadcopter. So I hijacked the quadcopter in flight. And this attack works. So uh, I'm going to try a live demo of this hack. I got my uh, personal pilot right here. <laughs> well, expect some uh, some uh, misbehaviors. So uh, I got the micro bit. So this is the one uh, where I put uh, some kind of connectors on it, and I plug it into my work controller. So this is uh, uh, I don't know for for this well far away if you can see this, but uh, it will be available uh, right after the talk. And I also got uh, this uh, Cherson quadcopter. So I um, will ask Xavier to fly the drone. Uh, be careful this. Uh, Yeah, so I think you can uh, land it uh, onto the table if you're skilled enough. I'm going to to perform the takeover uh, while the quadcopter is on the table to avoid the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> to avoid issues, so I'm plugging it on. Plug in my uh, fake remote. Just oh yeah, try your. Uh, okay, so I get control. So this time, this is me. Xavier, can you show people that you are unable to fly the drone? So I'm, go I'm going to try to land it nicely in the table. Well, no, not in the table, on the table. That's uh, a bit weird. Well, <laughs> uh, my skills are not so good. Yeah. Um, we're, we're gonna make just a, a little test. Uh, try to fly it again. Okay, so uh, the original remote is disconnected. So I uh, totally hijacked your your quadcopter. So it worked. Well, good. Uh, I also pre uh, <laughs> plan to to show you a video if uh, this failed. So uh, as a result, uh, sometimes the con remote controller gets disconnected. This was the case uh, here during the demo. So maybe uh, due to a timing issue. Uh, this uh, hack is uh, totally open source. I put all the code on the GitHub. So to, uh, feel free to hijack some drones. Uh, but be careful, too, because it can hurt people. So uh, if, and, and of course, hack only your, your quadcopters, not uh, others. Uh, it doesn't work for the green version. If uh, the uh, chair zone is, is green, uh, there is a slight uh, difference between the, the two, uh, mostly on the uh, stick values used by the remote controller. So if you are using this hack, it will work. You will, uh, you will manage to take uh, control of this one, but if you try to fly it with the right controller, uh, it's a total mess. <laughs> You are not going to to, to make it go with, uh, wherever you are, like, wherever you like, and also, well, this is, this doesn't doesn't work pretty well with this uh, version of this controller. So all of this stuff is uh, open source. So um, uh, I designed the uh, what I call the wide bit firmware. So this is a modi uh, modded version of the original micro -bit, micro uh, bit firmware, which is in fact uh, also a fork of micro Python. So you can uh, get it on GitHub. I included uh, all the tools, so uh, you can uh, uh, easily um, intercept ESB protocol, the Anand Shockburst protocol, the Shockburst legacy uh, protocol, the Cherson 610 protocol, if you want to play with it. 
and also uh, a very uh, small stuff uh, related to the Bluetooth low energy protocol because I'm currently working on it. It's not completely yet, uh, but on everything I presented in this presentation about the Bluetooth low energy protocol is presented in, the, in this framework. So if you want to, to get it, there is a, uh, 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 a quick link uh, on GitHub. You can get it. I pushed some uh, modifications, I guess, or we pushed some modifications on this uh, one of the tools. But in fact, uh, you can already get it and, uh, and sniff uh, all, of the, uh, all of this. Uh, as I said, you can also inject. So if you want to play with uh, some 2.4 gigahertz protocol, you can do it. So, uh, since it's uh, very easy to 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 use, uh, well, I, I'm expecting some kids to have a, to have fun with it, and and maybe uh, maybe it would be interesting, you know. Uh, I gave a, a slightly different version of this talk at DevCon this year, and uh, a mom came to me right after my talk, uh, asking uh, uh, asking me about, uh, you know, uh, I, I get a, sm a smart kid at home, and I. I I don't want uh, him to hijack all my wireless keyboards. So, what can I do to avoid this? Uh, do you have some advice? Uh, no, but uh, maybe change your keyboard. I don't know. Or use a, a, a wired keyboard. I don't know. But in fact, if you want to uh, put some uh, some uh, a few bucks, uh, like. Uh, 15 euros in this uh, micro bit. You can buy it very easily. This is, uh, in fact, a cheap, a tiny, and battery powered uh, radio frequency hacking tool. So you can just uh, use the, the uh, modified firmware I made to, to play uh, around. Uh, it allows also rapid prototyping with ESB, SB, so the Nordic protocol, and also Bluetooth low energy protocol. So it's quite better than the. Uh, most jack framework by Bastille because it's, uh, it got not, uh, not only, it doesn't get uh, a limitation of the 32 bytes of payload you can sniff. And we can do even better with the micro bits, the device abstraction layer, which is written in C++ and also open source. So if you want to go deeper with the, the micro bit in this in implementation, you can do a lot more with the uh, device abstraction layer. So, the, um, the future work with this uh, this device is uh, to uh, try to implement uh, an open source BLE sniffer, uh, like uh, the one provided by Nordic. I don't know if you uh, if you fo if you followed the workshop yesterday afternoon, uh, uh, which was uh, um, about uh, hacking uh, BLE smart locks. But in fact, um, Nordic semiconductors uh, developed uh, a closed source sniffer, a specific firmware you can put on your uh, 51A22 just to be able to, to sniff Bluetooth low energy devices. But it's uh, quite buggy and it sometimes works, sometimes not. So um, uh, I'm going to, I'm trying to make a, a, an open source version of it just to, to fix all of this. Uh, we can also add uh, support for other 2.4 gigahertz protocols. I put uh, the uh, XN297 transceiver support into the firm, uh, firmware, but we can do uh, the same with a lot more protocol. And uh, I plan to make some keyboard and mouse injection tool with uh, some kind of nice payload just to hijack, uh, say, Logitech keyboards and mouse. Uh, and the same with the Microsoft keyboard. In this uh, presentation, I showed that it's, it was possible to sniff keystrokes, but in fact, you can also inject keystrokes. Uh, this is uh, more interesting because uh, if you can do uh, the same like uh, a rubber ducky, for, for instance, or a TNC with uh, this micro bit, it could, could be wonderful. And uh, as a bonus, uh, I will show you where uh, the current work uh, I got, uh, I'm working on with uh, uh, the uh, micro bit. So this is. Um, uh, some kind of uh, BLE related uh, stuff. I'm actually I'm using the device abstraction layer to try to sniff Bluetooth low energy uh, communications and connections. So just to explain uh, what happens here, I got on the on the, on your right. Uh, oh, go so fast. On your right, the um, mobile application. Uh, this is the NRF Connect application. I, uh, I connected my smartphone to a device, and this one is on my computer. I'm trying to sniff uh, an active B Bluetooth low energy connection between my device and my smartphone uh, based on, uh, on the micro bit. So uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, well, the, the actual piece of code I got that performs this uh, Bluetooth low energy sniffing. Uh, it's not public yet. I'm 
planning to release it maybe in uh, 2018, uh, maybe at a conference or not, I don't know. But uh, in fact, I, I managed to do the same like the Ubuntu's BTLE, proto BTLE uh, tool, which is a SDR-based BLE sniffer that costs around uh, uh, 150 euros, I guess. So I'm doing quite the same with a 15 euros device. So this is uh, pretty interesting. So here it goes. <laughs> Still buggy. Not time for the, for the question yet. So here it is. Uh, I have an active connection between my smartphone and the device. I'm launching some kind of uh, uh, wireless sniffer I designed. So this is a, uh, a tool that we. Oh, this uh, this place not nicely, but uh, that will show the access addresses sniffed. Uh, over the different channels. So this one is the one uh, uh, created by my uh, smartphone because it has a, a power of minus 44 dBm. Well, still in development, like I said. And I'm using a, a, a small Python code to communicate with the microbit and get uh, all the information back from this connection. So I had to to provide some parameters, specific parameters to this tool. Uh, this one is the access address. The other one is a channel map used uh, by my smartphone. I will give uh, more details uh, maybe last, uh, in the next year. And then I will cover each connection parameter I talked about uh, earlier, but there was a CRC unit value. We can, uh, we can recover like this. So it takes some time to get the other parameters because we have to jump from one channel to another in order to recover the op interval, which is a time spent on, uh, spent on each channel uh, before hopping. And then we got the increment. And I then read some uh, characteristic here and put some uh, value in it. And I get all the link layer data for this, uh, this connection. So this tool is actually uh, able to export all, all of this into a, a pickup format, file format. You can then analyze it with Wireshark. Well, this is a, still a work in progress. Uh, I got uh, a, a lot of debug to, to do uh, before releasing this tool. But um, here it is. Uh, it's possible with this micro bit to sniff an active BLE connection with uh, just a small uh, 15 euros device. So this is a... Uh, Interesting, I guess. So this is uh, the end of the of, of my presentation. If you got any question, if you want to see the, the setup uh, I've created to hijack the, the quadcopter, just uh, come to the stage and uh, I will show you. Uh, I don't know if there was any question here.